Good morning friends and saunterers and prancers. I'm in a different spot this morning because I'm very warm and if the sun gets on me <laughs> my glasses steam up. So here we are. Um, good to see you. We are on Proverbs 13 today. So we're making some headway and there are some classic ones in this chapter which you'll recognise and you've probably heard me mention if you've been around me at all. Good morning Hayes and Pete, Naylor and Sandy, Forchi, great to see you guys. Kev, great to see you. Let's pray Lord Jesus, thank you so much for another, for another day and thank you for a beautiful weekend. Thank you for your kindness, your faithfulness, oh Lord, which is with us again today because you never change you never stop loving us amen next door's dog good morning fran good morning mary and kathy and fliss and allison great to see you guys so verse one verse th uh, chapter 13 a wise son heeds his father's instruction but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke good morning joyce um Scoffer, I think, is a great word. You think of someone with loads of donuts, don't you? Stuffing them in their face. <laughs> but that's not that kind of scoffer. This is a scoffer who just mocks all the time. And a scoffer doesn't listen to rebuke, but a wise son listens to his, um, hears his father's instructions. So it doesn't just, it's not just going on in the background, but he hears it, he takes it on board. Or a wise daughter heeds her father's instruction or her mother's or whoever. Um, and but so failing to listen to rebuke is a weakness failing to take it on board and or at least give it the time of day even if it we feel when we've listened to it it isn't something we need to particularly take on board it's something perhaps a person was cross with us about something and it's saying more about them but we do need to listen to it and it's wise to do that verse 2 from the fruit of his mouth, a man eats what is good, but the desire of the treacherous is for violence. And I, I think it's worth mentioning again that both the book of Proverbs and James the um, in the New Testament um, indicate that what comes out of our mouths is a product that can do us good or do us harm. It's not, words are not just inconsequential guffs of warmish air um, with a, a little bit of embellishment from the shape of our mouths and the movement of our tongue, they are actually creative, powerful um, products in themselves that can set the course of our life. They can bring good or harm to us. They can bring good or harm to other people. The, the idea that sticks and stones will break my bones and names will never hurt me is, is such so untrue. Calling names and all the rest of it and what we say with our mouths is really really powerful good morning Bev Deepak and Dean and Clive I I'm not sure I gather you've been in hospital Dean I hope you're well and recovering God bless you and speed you on your way with a healthy recovery um so there you are I'm blessing you Dean in Jesus name I bless you with a healthy speedy recovery there you go so what comes out of our mouth is important, but it even so much so that he says a man eats what is good. It's kind of fruit. It actually, le it's kind of something that can either nourish or poison us. It can nourish or poison other people. It's really important that we keep a watch over our mouths. Verse three carries on in that vein. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. Whoever opens wide his lips comes to ruin. And there's that sense of just somebody who cannot stop babbling. In the end, they'll do themselves harm. It's like, stop now before you hurt yourself. <laughs> it's actually quite a good rebuke. <laughs> when it comes with a kind smile. Verse 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied and here again we've got this theme of proverbs which is that laziness is a curse it won't do you any good it will leave you starved in your soul it won't there will be no reward coming into the your being and your 
the depth of you, you will just be an impoverished soul. Um, but if you are diligent and get on with stuff and see it through, complete the task, you will be rewarded not just with physical things, but inside you'll feel better. You'll feel like you... Yeah, I know this is kind of semi-worldly wisdom, but it's really, really truthful and and helpful as well. It's, it's um, important that we are practical, we get on with stuff and have something to show for at the end of the day, which we can sit back and think, yeah, I did that. That was actually a good thing. Good morning, uh, Denise and Francis. Verse 5, the righteous hates falsehood but the wicked brings shame and disgrace. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but sin overthrows the wicked. One pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor yet has great wealth. That is just funny, isn't it? It's like comical, really. Why would, why do people pretend to be poor? I think it's because they're afraid that they're going to get lots of people asking for stuff or lots of envy directed in their in their direction. Um, some people like to brag about being rich, don't they? And and so <laughs> you've got, you got one person pretending to be rich and trying to look grand and all the rest of it. And one person pretending to be poor. It's all just nonsense, isn't it? It's just be happy to be who we are and share what we've got and be generous and kind whether we're rich or poor good morning israel and good morning johnny good dean oh fusing your ankle oh my goodness that sounds bad good morning ruth and michael god bless you anyway dean and speedy recovery um so Verse 8, here's an interesting one. The ransom of a man's life is his wealth, but a poor man hears no threat. You're probably not going to find, generally speaking, that poor people are kidnap um, targets or uh, people who are likely to be held for ransom because they haven't got anything. It's like, what's the point? And so there, there might be, if I was super rich, a worry that I might be kidnapped. Haven't really been living with that worry, to be brutally honest. <laughs> That's not something that keeps me awake at night. In fact, <laughs> not much does. Um, so the light of the, verse nine, the light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. We could comment on each of these. I just wanna say, have a look in Revelation where God, where Jesus says, if you don't sort these things out, I'm gonna remove your candlestick. He's talking to a church and he's saying, you're actually not doing what you're meant to do. You're no longer a light, you're a trip hazard. I will remove you if you do not sort it out. And so sort your issues out, get on track, let your light shine. And you know, so anyway, verse 10, by insolence comes nothing but strife. That word there for insolence is pride and arrogance. By insolence comes nothing but strife, but with those who who take advice is wisdom. James in chapter four, just quickly, uh, just real quick, real quick. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? What, um, is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do. So he's saying, listen, these quarrels, this striving that's going on among you, among Christians, seriously, is because you have got issues, unsettled desires and passions in your own heart. Get them sorted out. Don't bring it into this environment and contaminate it and bring division. Sort it out. But it says insolent. With in by insolence comes nothing but strife. But with those who take advice is wisdom. And so the advice, here comes some advice. If you have got passions and strife going on inside you, you will bring it into any environment you come into and you will bring competition and, and dis, disunity and so on. So get, go to God and get those things sorted out. Go to another person who's wise and say, can you help me sort these internal battles out? Because I bring 
conflict with me wherever I go. I just am, and I, it's not good. Verse 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Interesting. What is the lure of gambling? It is the chance that you may become rich quick, boom, without really actually having to do much work for it. What is the allure of crime? It is to become rich quick. What is the allure of um, many of the, you know, things like the National Lottery? It's the chance that you could suddenly become super rich overnight just because you managed to guess a bunch of numbers correctly. You could, it could be amazing and all it's going to do is cost you one pound to enter, you know, and so the it's very alluring. It's that desire to become rich. But the book of Proverbs tells us that actually, if you look at the King James, it says an inheritance quickly gained will not be blessed in the end. It's like it kind of dwindles it. You think, oh, yeah, I'm, this is going to be the answer to all my needs. This is going to be everything I've ever wanted. Now, there are some people who get what they've always wanted and it makes them very happy. Hurrah. Praise the Lord. But very often we see that a sudden windfall doesn't actually benefit people who are already not wise. So if we're not wise and we haven't learnt wisdom and we suddenly get a stack of money, it will probably disappear fairly quickly and not be all that wonderful. But he says, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. And the general principle, again, we're talking general principles. The general principle is if you gather it bit by bit by bit, you value it, you steward it, you give it. When you give it, it costs you. It means Ooh. something to you. So you try and, do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a sacrifice. If you've got zillions of pounds and you give, of a couple of thousand it probably isn't you're not going to feel it that much but if you've only got you know a few hundred and you give 50 or a hundred it's a lot of money um so it anyway so if you so the idea is that we gather money little by little we build it up through the course of our lives and that's the normal pattern and that's actually you see people do that and they start off poor and they gradually improve and they, 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 they get a little house and then they get a little car or whatever and you see them gradually start to get a few things sorted out and they and then you know their clothes their wardrobe improves a bit and you think oh this yeah yeah and they're doing they're gradually starting to um, prosper and it's little by little that's the normal pattern but the great if someone leaves you a you know a fortune fantastic lucky old you just be wise with it and learn wisdom before is the key verse 12 hope deferred makes the heart sick but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life you've got to love that one i think many of us have had the hope deferred thing and we, <laughs> we know all too well what it's like and then We've also had the long and fulfilled and it's, oh, it's just so beautiful. And uh, I've had some wonderful longings fulfilled in my life and I'm still enjoying them today. And so they don't just become like, a, they're not just a momentary happy moment, but they're something that the gift that carries on giving, they're the tree. They are a tree of life that has fruit on it and it continues to be good. Um, Good morning, Esther. Good morning, Chris and Margaret. Um, classic one is our son, Josh, who spent about seven or eight years kind of really not walking with Jesus, but not really hating him or being angry or hostile to God, but just kind of not really walking with him somewhere out there floating around in the ether, not really sure of who he was. Maybe it might have been 10 years I'd lost track. And then one day he through various circumstances where God sort of got him in a bit of a pinch point if you like he cracked and he just said Jesus come back into my life and the prayer he prayed was so utterly stunning and I don't think we've cried so much ever and it was just the most incredible day and yesterday we watched him get married to beautiful Victoria and although we couldn't have the place full of people it was a lovely lovely day 
and it, it's so the tree this longing fulfilled which happened three or four years ago when Joshi returned to Jesus is this tree that's continuing to bear lovely fruit and we're all enjoying it and we're so happy so that is really exciting isn't it that's, that's what I'm talking about the longing fulfilled is a tree of life or a desire fulfilled verse 13 but hope deferred oh it is wearing and if if you're if you're the person with who's constantly been praying for something and it hasn't happened try to take comfort and strength from other people when you see them get their longing fulfilled or a longing fulfilled and those of us who have our longings fulfilled or a particular longing, we see someone who's still in the hope deferred stage let's be kind to them and not impatient as oh for goodness sake sorry you know what i mean let's be let's understand the trial of it all be considerate uh, where are we verse 13 whoever despises the word brings destruction on himself this is interesting isn't it whoever despises the word brings destruction on himself but who he who reveres the commandment will be rewarded somebody who honors the word of god will be rewarded but the person who despises it is going to be a problem they're going to end that I, we could go on and on about it because it, some translations say we'll be in debt to it and it's like it will come after us that word will stand the word won't change just because we don't agree with it god's word doesn't change just because we don't agree with it and in the end it will continue and it's insistent it's like the fire alarm that's going off you can't stuff, stuff a sock in it and make it stop right verse 14 the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. That's nice, isn't it? Good sense wins favour, but the way of the treacherous is their ruin. Everything the pr in everything the prudent acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. There is something, isn't there, about the foolish person. It's almost kind of made into a fine art and we kind of make it noble. There are some celebrities on TV who I feel are like that and they really annoy me. It's like they're just so ignorant and the way they talk is so lewd, nasty, dirty, <laughs> kind of trashy yuck. And yet they're made out to be celebrities. And I think, no, all you've ever done is say yuck, say horrid things. Who wants, why, why are we ce celebrating your contribution to culture go away <laughs> oh dear oh dear so verse 17 a wicked messenger falls into trouble but a faithful envoy brings healing yes when you send a messenger and they do what you've asked them to do is very good good news isn't it poverty and disgrace come to him who ignores instruction but whoever heeds reproof is honored a desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul there you are that's Kind of repeat in verse 12 in a different way a desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul but to turn away from evil is an abomination to fools so actually you try and tell a fool to turn away from his or her evil they don't want to listen it's an abomination no way why would i want to turn away from my folly from my evil <laughs> morning sarah sarah um so Verse 20, here's a really good one that we should remember. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So let's pick our friends, pick our companions. Do you know what? It doesn't mean we don't love people who are, who are foolish and unwise, and we only select the very best, wisest people to be our friends. I don't think we can always pick our friends, but we can pick those who become our companions, who we hang out with and spend, you know, sort of allowed to be influencers in our lives because actually the ones we hang out with and we allow that, that privilege of get, bringing their influence into our lives, they will shape us. And so let's get wise people in that mix so that we can we can become wise ourselves because their values rub off on us you remember psalm 1 it says don't walk in the way of sinners and sit in the seat of the scornful and all of that 
for the companion of fools will suffer harm. Verse 21, disaster pursues sinners, but the righteous are rewarded with good. Now, in this life, sometimes we don't always get our reward quite as promptly as we'd like. And we kind of hang in there for our reward and we're saying, any time now, Jesus would be good. And But we do know that there is an ultimate reward where we get to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever which is awesome so we do get rewarded and that's that's what our ultimate hope is but there god has wonderful ways of rewarding us along the way and giving us paying us dividends if you like on our investment as we go along which is very cool um so a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous and Again, I've said on the saunter before when we were doing the Psalms how much of an inheritance my dad left us. He left us a certain amount of money, which was nice, and it helped us um, with, you know, being able to buy a house, which was fantastic. But he also left us with a spiritual inheritance, which we are living off today, and we're sharing with our children, and we're sharing with the world around us, and I'm sharing with you now is because my dad faithfully walked with God day by day by day, back in the day when it was not trendy or popular or cool to be a Christian. And he was known to be a man of God, even though he was thought of probably as a bit eccentric and a bit strict in his value systems. And yet he's left me with an inheritance which I am now continue to, to invest in and hopefully lay up an inheritance for my children and their children. So a good man leaves an inheritance for, to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And so I know Solomon's talking about sp physical wealth, but he's also saying there's a spiritual inheritance, but the sinner's, inher sin sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. That's a really interesting one. And so there, there is money that it has been gathered by ungodly people. And I think we can legitimately say, come on then, Lord, let's have some of that come into us. Let's have some of that unrighteous wealth coming back into the hands of the righteous so we can use it well. Verse 23, the fallow ground of the poor would yield much food, but is swept away through injustice. So going back to the one where we said that the, the poor person doesn't tend to get kidnapped and held to ransom because th there wouldn't be any ransom to be paid. They tend to suffer more from injustice and poor government and also the kind of environmental disasters like famines and hurricanes and floods and stuff like that. So that's what they would tend, but their their ground would be fruitful if it could be cultivated well, but often it's, he's swept away through injustice. Verse 24, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Verse 25, the righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the belly of the wicked suffers want. Just the thing about the rod of discipline. When, when we were children, it was a famous saying, spare the rod, spoil the child, which is a kind of hijack of that proverb. And the idea was that if you didn't smack a child and didn't give them a good hiding now and again, then they would become a bad person. Now, the idea is exaggerated the point is this that if we don't discipline our children appropriately at the right time in a timely way in a firm and loving and consistent way then they do grow up without an understanding of good boundaries without the ability to regulate themselves and they are a problem for themselves we're giving them a poor inheritance if you like we're, we're setting them up to fail and so as a parent, it's really important that we bring discipline into our lives. And that's what's implied here by the rod. And it was in the form of corporal punishment. And we know that the law has changed and we're not to do that anymore. But if we imagine a rod being a measuring rod and we're saying, no, this, we're, we're using, where well, there is some measure. And we say, no, this is, whoa, this is off. This is out. You it's not going to happen in this house and I, I do use that kind of language I say no 
Not in this house. That does not happen. We don't talk like that in this house. And nobody talks to their mother like that in this house. So sort it out. And somebody, there has to be that kind of line drawn. We say, no, that's, that kind of behaviour doesn't happen here. And that's really, really important. What father, it says, does not, who loves his child, does not discipline them. And the Lord disciplines us. And we as parents have the responsibility to discipline our children. In Hebrews, it says that um, uh, our fathers disciplined us for a time. It may be Romans, actually. He said, our fathers disciplined us for a time as they saw fit. And so God gives us that discretion about how we apply discipline and where we draw the line. But he does expect us to do it. And we need to be faithful in it. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't until those children are grown up and have left our left the nest, if you like. That need to reinforce the boundaries and stay consistent in the, the well, no, we're establishing a culture, aren't we? No, that doesn't happen in this house. So <laughs> that kind of thing. So um well, there you go. So whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. Let's let's walk with the wise today let's let this be our companion and we'll walk with this one and we'll walk with proverbs 13 today and let it settle into our hearts and make us wise so good morning leon great to see you bro um yes those who love their children enough care those who love their children care enough to discipline thank you sarah um we'll see you tomorrow and God bless you. Have an amazing day and be filled with the Spirit of God and full of his wonderful grace. Lots of love.